What's going on everyone? We're going to be starting the water-cooled PlayStation 3. We've got all the parts we need laid out here. Before we start any assembly, there's a couple things we need to cut. This metal shielding here so that our water block will fit. I've kind of marked out the area roughly that I'm going to need to cut out. And we also need to cut the top shell like I said in the last video, to accommodate the larger fan. This is a cutout for a 120, but we're going to be using the 140. So I'm going to cut that stuff now, and then we'll actually start assembling. Alright, we got this whole middle section cut out. It's going to go around the water block. So now we need to put the metal shielding on, and then install our water block. Alright, we got the metal shielding put back on. It's just a few of these silver screws spots to kind of hold it all together and now we can go ahead and put our thermal paste on and install our water block which uses the same mounting plates as the factory heat sink which is really nice it does need different screws though however to fit on here but let's go get some thermal paste all right got our water block installed Uh, now I believe next step we can go ahead and set it in the bottom half of the shell and start putting the other components on and then we'll go ahead and cut that. Alright, we got it set in the bottom half of the shell. We can go ahead and put the Wi-Fi and uh, the other signal cable, what the heck is that one for, over here and you'll see that these, they look like they've been crushed a little bit, which they are. I kind of bent them so that there's more room in between them because that's right where the temperature display goes. So that's all we need to do is bend them a little bit so that they're a little more off to the side. Alright, got the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antennas um, screwed back in place. Fed back there to the motherboard and plugged in. You can see how this one, I have it turned to the side and bent this way so that we have room for the pump and the temperature display here. Next up, we'll go ahead and put in the Blu-ray drive, which has way too many ribbon cables. It's a big pain, but the hardest one is that one in the middle. You have to try to plug it in while holding the blue drive up. Another way you can do it is take the top of the Blu-ray drive off, and you can access it through the middle, which makes it a little bit easier. But we need to get that plugged in, and then the three ribbon cables out the back, and there's one screw on the back of the Blu-ray drive. All right, we've got the Blu-ray drive in, and we can go ahead and take it right back out because I forgot to put the power strip in first. That needs to plug in underneath. All right, we got that installed. Next up, we would put the power supply on, but because on this motherboard, the fan plug-in is back here, it'll actually be underneath the power supply. So we need to plug that in first, even though we're not using the factory fan. This is where we're going to draw our 12 volts for our pump, fan, and whatever LEDs we add in. Okay, we got this plugged in. Your brown wire is 12 volts, black is ground. We got that spliced into a 3-pin. We'll go ahead and put our power supply on. Um, and actually, before that, we should probably put the fitting on this side, because the power supply comes right up to here, so it'll make that a lot more difficult. Uh, yeah, so we probably won't use these on the inside because you won't even see them. We'll probably just grab some chrome ones um, that are also rounded at the top, give a little bit more clearance. So let's put uh, a couple fittings on here real quick, and then we'll go ahead and put the power supply on. All right, got the power supply in place. You can see how that fitting does fit underneath there in that little kind of cavity there. Um, and then... This is actually a vent because the original fan would blow the air through the heat sinks and through the power supply out the back. So we still need some airflow in here, which is why every slim I've done so far of water cooling, I've still had the fan and radiator mounted here, blowing air in, so that it's blowing it through the radiator, fresh, cool air. It's still going through this part of the motherboard and going through the power supply and out the back. And yeah, like I said, the, all the other water-cooled PS3 Slims I've done are set up the same way. And without all of this mess over here, we've got plenty of room for our pump. And I've always used this pump. 
Uh, I am gonna see if the phobia pump would also fit in this spot just for the heck of it in case that's easier because you can't put any pump top on these it won't fit underneath the shell you have to leave this one on here which means you got to use 3 8 tubing and you also need this one to kind of turn around right into the water block I have those 90 degree elbows we can use um, before I just used several fittings I also had like a Y fitting coming off of here so we had the plug for the temperature display which leads me to the next part here like I said I got the power supply in got this plugged into it here and then there's another uh, harness that's going to plug into the power supply on one side and the other side into the motherboard that is where we splice in to get our five volts for here let's see this one here was spliced in from the other one I'm gonna have to cut this off and um, we do have this extra wiring here for the momentary switch because this 5 volts is a standby 5 volts. So as soon as you plug the console in, temperature display is on. That's how my first one was set up, but it burns out pretty quick when it's on all the time. Not pretty quick, but, you know, a couple of years or whatever. Um, so that's why I put this momentary switch, plus I just really like the way it looks with the matching chrome. And so basically the temperature display will be always off unless you press the momentary switch. You can check your temperature and then turn it back off. Um, but that's what we need to do now is splice this in to where this cable is and make sure it is wired up to the momentary switch. But before we do that, we need to take this outside and cut it because once it's wired up to the switch, um, this is now a part of this. There's plenty of cable to have it set aside to service it, but then you can just put it back on. So yeah, let me go ahead and splice this in. This is actually the red one that was in the blood splatter Xbox One, so it can actually switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Um, but yeah, that's the one we're going to use. I also need to slim down these little pegs on the side that will allow it to fit in the hole that's already been cut out from the last build on there. Oh yeah, and the temperature display that was in there before, like I said, was a plug fitting but this one we're using I can't really switch it out it's hardwired in there is a flat sensor which I think will give a uh, more accurate reading it's nice to know that the water temperature on the loops but this will actually tell you a better temperature of what your actual chips are so we're gonna feed that through the center of the water block so it's right between the two chips um, touching the surface of the water block all right, got this cut out bigger and the holes drilled. Got these screws in there to kind of hold it in place while I drilled the holes. And the temperature display, got that sanded down. Just need to finish that little bit of wiring there and then we can move forward. Okay, so we're about to connect probably just the positive together on this harness. This is the piece that goes from the power supply to the motherboard. And then we will leave the ground apart to attach to this momentary switch. That's those two wires there. And we'll wait to do that until we drill the holes to mount the reservoir. And I also need two more screws to mount the uh, radiator. I just have two of them in right now, but this is basically how it will sit. I will have to flip it this way because these ports are just a little too close to the side. I won't really be able to fit anything over there so we'll just have them out the top and this one will probably just go straight into the reservoir and this one will kind of loop down maybe we'll put the uh, flow meter there on the side that'd be pretty cool so i need to drill those holes and run and get some more screws real quick and we will finish connecting this up and then we can start planning out the actual fittings and tubing so we can start cutting that to size and make sure exactly what fittings we're using and where. And then we can kind of do the final assembly. Alright, so I got the screws I need for the reservoir and radiator. They are now attached to the top shell. Put a little bit of this chrome trim just on the inside edge here. Just to kind of help fill that gap in a little bit. However, um, I may need to rotate this a different direction. So this is the part where you need to start thinking about the fittings and tubing and how you're going to route it. 
Um, I think first thing I'm going to do is get this pump mounted. I want to put some double-sided adhesive on either side of those capacitors. I don't want it to go across the top of those. And we're going to make it thick enough so that it goes kind of even with this part of the metal frame. But we don't want the pump to be touching any of the metal frame. We want that to kind of be cushioned to avoid vibrations going through the whole system. Um, so I need to do that. But I also want to connect whatever tubing I need to first before connecting this down because it's a lot harder to put this tubing over barb fittings. You know, when you're putting pressure on something you don't really want to. Um, this is also where I need to think about some LEDs. So I'm going to need to turn this into two plug-ins, one for our fan and one for the pump. And in one of those I need to splice in at least one UV LED. Um, now I mounted these mounts for the reservoir off to the side a little bit. One to hide two of the holes that were already drilled from a previous build in this shell. Two, I kind of like the asymmetrical look. Kind of hangs over there. Um, but also there's another hole you can see right here. That's the fan is not totally covering up. But we're going to use that to feed the LED wire. That's just going to go straight up under here and go into a UV LED into this tower plug that's going into the reservoir which should definitely illuminate that UV red fluid very nice. We may do a second one that goes on the bottom of the flow meter here but like I said this is where I'm kind of stuck figuring out obviously we need to go from our reservoir into this cutout that'll go into the top of the pump and then we'll pump it around into our block, out the other slot, into the radiator, and back into the reservoir somehow. So that's what we're still figuring out. Um, and the last thing we're going to do is wire up that extra wire on the temperature display to the momentary switch. But um, I think that's going to be it for this video. I don't want it to get too long. I was hoping to do the entire thing in one. But I want to do the kind of finishing stuff in the last video and actually fill the system and check it out, the final product. So <clears throat> last thing I wanted to say about these cutouts, in my very first version of the PS3 water-cooled uh, build, which was like probably 13 or 15 years ago at this point, I drilled holes in the side of this. And you have to set this top shell on like this and swing it down. So as I'm swinging it down, I had to try to feed the tubing through those holes. So in this version, I just cut out slots so I can have the tubing already out and ready to go. And those slots, as you swing this down, will just set over top of those tubes sticking out the side. And yes, ideally, you'd want to go from the pump to the radiator and then to the block and back to the reservoir. But I don't want to have that many tubes sticking out of the side. I've done it this way and all the other water-cooled PS3 Slim builds, and I stand by the fact that this is just small enough of a loop that that little difference there isn't going to really make a big difference on the actual temperature, maybe a couple degrees at most. So, yeah, this is definitely going to be plenty cooling. I'm not worried about that little detail there. So, anyway, i got to figure this out. Like I said, I'm thinking about having to turn this around so I have more space instead of everything kind of being in this big mess on the side. I can run a couple up and just kind of swing over here and have this one go back into the reservoir. I don't really want anything going to this side of the reservoir. I like having this side clean and open. So anyway, that's where we're at. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.